should, I, I should start this intro a little bit different because this is part of it, I guess. Because Sam doesn't. Sam always makes fun of what's going on, guys. <laughs> this is the gays podcast. This, um, so we're gonna start it off differently. Hello, guys. This is or oh, and gals. We don't want to obviously put in the one gender or anything. Anyone. Anyone. <laughs> um, this is the Gaines Podcast. How are you today? Rock. You I, rock that are listening out there. You, you <laughs> rock, in. everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. This is the eighth episode. Episode de ocho. Um, this is, well, flexing my Spanish skills right there. Um, this is great, it's guys. Um, another, another good episode. We've been hearing some feedback, which I love to hear. Um, hopefully you guys are watching, listening. Give us a like. Um, we do appreciate all the support of what's been going on. I think we have another killer episode. Every time, every time I, I don't know about what you, what you guys are thinking, but every time after every episode we record, I get pumped. Like, I get more motivated. Um, I feel like we talk about a lot of stuff that's not even planned sometimes, which is great. And it kind of leads over always to the next episode, which hopefully you guys are seeing. I think I th- I, that's a good thing to say, but, like, I don't know. You, you feel, I know Roman feels the same way, dude. He gets, we get jazzed up. We, like, almost fist bump for the next 30 minutes after we're done recording because we think it's awesome. A little chest bump, too, for you football fans. That's something and, I look forward to. I listen to each, um, you know, obviously, like, we're in the moment, you know, we're experiencing it now, but, like, I listen to each podcast to see, like, oh, like, is what I said, is it, like, in line with, like, what I actually think, or was that something that, like, I made up off the cuff because we don't, like, provide references. It's more just, like, casual, but ho- hopefully we can, you know, the information and the value we provide is something that either, like, inspires you to, like, look more into it, or if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're, we're more than happy to provide some of the references or some of the um, resources that, that we go to for some of the information that we have. Yeah, and also keep in tune. Um, we're also going to be adding and doing something different, but I don't want to say too much because it might release before this podcast. But Roman and I have some things going on that I think you, we think you're going to like. Um, so keep in tune. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. You're, you're, you're subscribed on YouTube. Subscribe to Roman's channel on YouTube. He's doing some things differently, which is nice. I'm trying to just focus on the podcast right now, but there's, there's something more to come from Roman and I. Just keep, I, I, I'm sorry I can't say it out there because I don't know if it's going to be released after this or before this, um, but it's, it's going to be really nice to see um, and I think you guys are going to like it as well. Um, but, yeah, I think, what, I mean, we're, we're going to be talking about nutrition myths today, um, piggybacking on our last episode because we couldn't really give you the time. I mean, a lot of the things is, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to give you all of it in the sh- period of time we have because we could talk about this for hours, which is, I know it's crazy. But, you know, with the experience and the knowledge we've read and listened to and watched, there's a lot of stuff in our heads that, you know, I think this is great on why we started this in the beginning. Um, but I want to start it off by kind of giving hopefully a good background on how Roman's training has been going because we really haven't really talked about our own training since like almost like the first episode, yeah. which is crazy because, you know, hopefully, if you guys don't care, please leave a comment, let us know. Like if, if part of like Roman explaining what, how his training is going, how my training is going, let us know because... This is something I just threw on Roman literally before this, too, because I wanted to see, like, you know, Roman's feedback and your guys' feedback to see if that's appropriate. I mean, if you guys want to see that in the end of the episode, beginning, you know, just a quick update. Maybe it doesn't need to be so ever so often. It could be, you know, this is the eighth episode. So, you know, this has been eight weeks pretty much, like, because we record only once a week unless besides, like, that Thanksgiving week. But even then, because we recorded for the next week, yeah. You know, this is the first update, but how's everything going with you, Roman? Like, how's everything with training? Pretty good, I'd say. Um, I've, had, I've hit some, like, sweet PRs recently, which has really given me some, some confidence in my um, training regimen or the program that I'm currently running. So I hit, um, I worked up to 260 by 8 for four sets on squat, pounds, 260 pounds, uh, for eight reps, uh, for all four sets. That's and crazy. they're pretty smooth. It, I did wear a belt. Um, but that's 
that's that was a rep PR for me because last time I hit 260, I couldn't complete. Um, I was doing four sets of five at the time. That was the last training block sometime last summer or late spring, middle, middle early summer, late spring. So within like six-ish months, I added like three, four reps, and I was able to maintain that strength throughout, um, throughout my sets as well. So that was, that was a big PR for me that I was really pumped for. Um, since then, because of like I've been traveling a little bit for... for um, and you're going to be traveling in like yeah. less than two weeks, which is crazy. Yeah. Spend so. time with family. Um, I still do work out on vacation, but it's it's much different. We have like a little at home like basement gym, so we don't have any like heavy duty barbells or anything like that. So I I try to simulate movements as much as possible, but I I really focus on just spending time with family. Um, but I hit two seventy five um, by six three weeks ago, maybe. Um, and you just said what two ninety five yesterday. And then I hit the two ninety five for a single. Um, I so I uh, Saturday did legs. I did two seventy five by five for my first working set, and I was slow. I've been slowly tapering um, my uh, the reps. So I figured why not hit a couple of singles just because why not? Yeah. Um, I need to to test to see if um, I'm able to get to my my year goal, which is three hundred fifteen pounds for. Um, a single. So after I hit that, felt pretty strong. I decided why not load up the bar. I'll hit 295. I uh, I'll usually videotape myself. I to my eye, I was a little high. Um, so I figured, okay, I'll do it again. I'll make sure I sink this one. Um, I sank it real really good depth. Um, it was like you know without like. Well, without that was after that was a that was a second set. That was my second single, yeah. Um, so I pretty much actually just canned the workout there. So I did like, and which is sets fine. Of, I did like eight yeah. sets of squats, which was like uh. five sets of warm ups, and then like three working sets. Um, I had spent like over an hour in the gym, and we were kind of taxed for time that day. So uh. um, that was that was like it. That was legit my whole workout. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that is like the type of workout you'd want to follow for like maximizing like, um, like leg gains. But it, it is what it is. I was really happy to hit 295 for single um, because I had failed on that previously the last um, time I tried to max, I think in March. So there's definitely um, some strength there. The bar moved moderately fast. I wouldn't say fast. Um, so I think I have a little bit more in the tank. I don't know if I'll actually be able to get 315, but I'm definitely going to go for it. So the goal is to just um, work up to some heavy singles tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. Um, that's what is today the ninth to so the tenth. Um, work up to three hundred. If I can hit three hundred, it moves pretty quick. Then um, what I'll do on Saturday, it'll be like my last um, attempt for the year. I'll and do my warm up are you, sets. Are you gonna do three fifty? Are you gonna attempt three fifteen by jump, the end of I'm the year? I'm gonna jump straight to it after my warm up sets. Okay. So I'll probably do uh, just to give you like um, listeners' idea. I'll do like one thirty five by eight or ten. I'll do 185 by 5, I'll do 225 by like 2 or 3, I'll do 275 by 1, and I'll jump right into it. My warm-up sets will probably have like 1 to 3 minutes in between, and then for my, the first time I test my max, I'll probably have like a 3 to 5 minute rest in between 275, depending on like how I feel, um, and I'll just jump right into it. That's good, so, yeah, and then uh, speaking on that, I know you just gave some update with squatting. Um, <clears throat> If you haven't followed Roman on Instagram, he's going to be also articulating and adding a instructional instructio, instruction video on benching. I obviously never, I can, I can never speak sometimes, um, but on how to bench. Part of it is a uh, strong. Uh, how to what is it? How to be strong? Yeah, it's uh, what is strong. What is strong? Uh, how to bench. How to bench. Yeah, that'll be up yeah. on YouTube probably within the next like week or two. So that's yeah, that's a good one. Um, is your bench? Are you still going to be focusing on benching uh, deadlifts too, right? Um, so, I I do. I must admit, like say, you ever deadlifts met, yeah. have like been on the back burner recently. Yeah. I've been doing like some straight leg deadlifts, but they've been like really taxing myself. And since I like I crushed my year long goal, I kind of put them on the back burner. I'll throw them in like once a week, once every other week. Um, but since I've been focusing on the straight leg deadlift for, for hamstrings, it's like a, a hamstring dominant movement um, for hypertrophy. I, I've, I definitely put them on the back burner for sure. And, w and, w and which is fine because when he was focusing, and he's focusing on a big 315 squat for him, 
Um, and then, you know, Roman doesn't weigh that much. I mean, Roman's like, I think you're still, what, almost 30 pounds lighter than me still? Yeah. Okay. And, and, yeah. and that's... Maybe like 165 probably. And, yeah, and that's going to be almost twice your weight, which yeah. is which is really great to see, um, especially moving forward. Um, so th- that's one of his big goals. So, crap, I'm, I'm behind you kind of putting deadlifts on the back burner. I also do too. Because I like just like Roman, my deadlift is already at where it's at, and you know maybe next year I'll start trying to do something different with it. But yeah. I'm like the same way right now. Like I'm, I, I'm more squat focused. Yeah. Which is uh, awesome. Which is okay. Yeah. 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 Especially if you have a certain lift, or like you're you you keep on hammering a lift and like you have like nagging pain or something like that. It it might make sense to kind of put it on the back burner, maybe kick it out for eight to twelve weeks, like maybe an extended mesocycle, just so that you can allow for, like, those muscles, those structures, that movement pattern to, like, kind of heal up. And then when you get back into it, make sure you go, like, fairly light. I would say um, I wouldn't jump into anything, like, more than, like, 50 or 60% of your training max. What's a mesocycle? A mesocycle can be defined as uh, a collection of microcycles. So you probably could define it as, like, a min- like up to two weeks. Yeah. But I would say that for a decently designed mesocycle, it should probably be like, anywhere between four, which is still super short. I four recommend to between 16? like eight to twelve. Oh yeah, eight to up, up to potentially sixteen. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's the whole total of a cycle compared to yeah, and then micros obviously. I know like NASM NASM has a little bit more specific. They do like they don't do weeks, I think they do months, which yeah. is it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean it's kind of like, you know, you're talking about weeks, four weeks is a month. So they they do it, I think, is a little bit different when it comes to, like, months. But whatever. Different units, who cares? Um, anything else on the training piece you want to? Bench. Bench has been huge for me. I worked up to 190 by 8. Um, Killing I'm it. Still not able to get it for all four sets. Um, so around third or fourth set, fatigue, like, really sets in. And around, like, rep six or seven, it's starting to look kind of sketchy. So um, I've had my last two training sessions ago on, um, I think it was my third, I think it was my third working set. I failed on eight. So seven was like kind of sketchy going up, but I got it. I needed help with um, eight. Um, so I just put that down as like a failed rep. And then I, I uh, took five pounds off the bar, made sure I had like a little extra um, wait time, like five, six minutes um, in between and hit my last set. And then this past go around, um, I got 180 by or 190 by eight for sets one, two, and three. In set four, I failed on set, uh, rep uh, seven. Um, so it, it's slowly getting there. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna hammer away at it a little bit more just because I I do feel like it might be like a slight form, um, say form thing as opposed to like strength. But um, I I know for certain this is I'm in like big PR. Uh, town right now I've yeah. never been able to like push this kind of weight so I'm really pumped about that my my chest is probably like the biggest it's ever been that's really good yeah yeah and then uh we're hoping to see we can't wait to see your measurements when it comes to next year and then when you when you obviously either gain you know do that mini cut and all that good stuff so can't wait to see that um with my training um you know right now it looks like my squats uh, for rep ranges is not as good as Roman's, uh, but I mean, when you look at it, like my squat in like a meet um, was only three fifteen. So, like I like still to this day still struggling on that, which is fine. I don't mind it. Uh, the process is getting there. I've had some issues with uh, almost I wouldn't say so much shoulder, but rear delt to shoulder in the back side of my shoulder. Uh, recently, um, Roman and I have been taking a look at it where kind of we might be maybe the the squat plat- the platform I build for myself, the shelf, uh, meaning obviously where I place the bar on my back, um, where the tightness is or with when it comes to my arms and whatnot and my hand placement. Um, so we're still working on that, uh, but everything's going smooth. My deadlifts, I'm at yesterday I did 305 for four sets of eight. Um, bench, I'm still doing 205, 210 for five sets of eight. So just one more set than Roman, but I, I definitely understand his feeling when it comes to uh, fatigue. 
because you you know when you're talking about five sets of eight and when you're going to your almost your RPE with the intensity which is pretty high um it, it's 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 been it's been crushing it but it's it's fine I actually uh I like to put on a slingshot here and there to kind of overload slash um make sure my form is correct um I never suggest to buy all the products when it comes to lifting but ask for them for Christmas birthday whatever um but I like the slingshot because it, it keeps my elbows tight it shows me where I'm supposed to be placing keep my actually it keeps my lats pretty tight too which is an awesome um you know correction when it comes to benching because you still have to keep everything tight it's almost like a squat a deadlift things like that it's a full body movement um but no everything's going well the shoulder thing doesn't bother me too much um so yeah I, i'm gonna keep trucking along keep stretching out mobility and uh do um more tissue work on my actual body itself um but let's get let's get into it um we're going to start off doing some more in-depth and in nutrition myths um, when it comes to training. Um, and I, I do want to point it out there. Obviously, some of these are kind of like at you when it comes to like, boom, like that should be totally wrong. And some of these are actually um, some serious ones where it's just like, you know, they say that, but you never know if that's correct or not because there's not enough research out there. And a lot of times, you know, Roman and I were talking about some documentaries that have been released really recently released. I'm not saying the name. I can't because I, I didn't watch it. I'm not saying the name. But, like, there's so much out there on, like, documentaries where it gives you that one big picture where there's not enough evidence for the other side where it makes you automatically believe, like, everything else is wrong. Yeah. Um, so do you want to do you want to start off with some some like what are some of the what are the big ones that you went because we wrote some down, but I don't know if we're going to get through all of them, but. I think, we, I think we got a good amount when it comes to the actual nutritional myths. Yeah, so um, I'll combine these because they're, they're certainly interrelated. Um, so you hear like carbs are bad um, or carbs make me fat or sugar is bad, uh, sugar is making me fat or sugar insert like disease is causing me to like become diabetic. Um, so those are myths because as we have alluded to, I believe in our last podcast, um, there's there's no macronutrient that is necessarily bad um, if taken into context within the individual's goal and uh, within a, a, a certain degree of moderation, a certain degree. Um, so what do I mean by that? So um, carbs are not bad because what carbs are is a, a primary fuel source for us. So some examples are honey, uh, white sugar, wheat or white wheat, bread, mm -hmm. uh, fruits, vegetables, kidney beans, black beans, lentils, um, those are actually higher in carbs than they are in protein. Um, so it, it's something to keep in mind if you are looking at like creating a, a vegan or a, veg a vegetarian diet that um, it most likely will be pretty high in, um, in carbohydrates. So I believe this was popularized by um, certain concepts like, um, like the gluten-free movement um, so not to say that there's like anything wrong with that because there are um, individuals that have celiac disease, for example. Um, so That's a big time, big time disease yeah. if you really have it. But in my knowledge, there's really not too many people that have it. It's, I know like one person right now that has yeah. it. That's it. I think I've only ever met like maybe a handful of people um, that, that have it. Um, so celiacs is a disease where your body reacts very strongly. It's an allergic reaction to gluten, um, which is a, a certain nutrient that's found um, in, in certain like wheats, for example. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like part of like the, the wheat um, like fiber or the wheat um, hull, um, wheat germ, I think. Um, anywho, um, so individuals that do have celiacs, it is very, very important that they stay away from, from gluten. Um, but other than that, I, I, so what I'm trying to say is I think that that and like books like Wheat Belly, I think those cause some sort of scare around carbohydrates. So let's say your goal is to just maintain your body weight. You're very comfortable with where you are. Your um, blood levels, um, you know, as reported by your physician, are in the healthy range. Um, you're not necessarily looking to gain weight, looking to lose weight. If you're eating carbohydrates in a range 
where you're not gaining weight. So let's say you like to enjoy, uh, I don't know, a like a pastry every once in a while. That's not that's not something to um, be like shameful of for or yourself. shy away from or shy away from yeah. um, because if it's taken in the context of what's called an isocaloric or a maintenance um, a maintenance diet, meaning that once again, you don't lose weight, you don't gain weight, that's all those fancy terms mean, then there's nothing necessarily wrong with eating carbs or a carbohydrate. So that, I, I think this is harmful to people because they, one, uh, they synthesize this um, information, they say, okay, carbs are bad, thus I should stay away from them. Any food that they learn is a carb, they're thus not going to eat. Blueberries are a fantastic uh, fruit for you. And if you learn they're that... They're considered a carbohydrate, too. They're considered a carbohydrate. So if you consider, oh, blueberries are bad, i got to stay away from blueberries. Now you learn strawberries are, are okay. mostly carbohydrate. I need to stay away from strawberries. Then you learn that wheat bread is mostly... I need to stay away from wheat bread. You're cutting certain um, essential nutrients out of your diet, which may be incredibly difficult to supplement or to add back into your diet um, containing um, non-carbohydrate sources. So, um, and some of those sources are really necessary or beneficial to boosting your diet or yeah. just like your metabolism, everything around it, like, you know, your, your health. Yeah. I mean, shit, I couldn't, couldn't tell you the last time I went a day without eating like a serving of fruit or vegetables. Yeah. I know that might sound like bad for some of the, the meat eaters out there or some people are like, man, I don't really like that. Well, find something that you do like. Yeah. Or supplement around it where some of the things you can't really eat because you don't like, I guess. Yeah. But the carnivore diet is very challenging. There's, there's a, you have to get very, very strategic how you, um, how you formulate that. And I, I don't know if it'll ever be something that I hey, like would recommend to somebody. Um, but I mean, some people are doing it and seeing like impressive results. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and I don't think we're ever going to see results from that because I don't think we're going to ever find a controllable group. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Like, even if you pay for a controllable group, like, how many people can you can say that can do it consistently for, like, a year? It's going to be anecdotal information to start. Um, that's, like, yeah. Dr. Sean Baker. He puts out a lot of information about that, and he's... he's oh, I yeah, say, I know. I, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. He has, like, somewhat of a community about yeah. that. Um, but we're getting a little off track, <laughs> per usual. Um, but, yeah, so the myth is... Um, are carbohydrates bad? Is sugar bad? No, they're not bad in the context of fitting within whatever your weight weight loss, weight gain, or weight maintenance goal is. So that's that's a myth. Um, there's been certain movements or certain books that have been written about it, um, but you can write that one off. Um, you're totally finding that that pastry or having a handful of uh, blueberries, blueberries or strawberries. Yeah, and uh, three things I want to kind of add off that. I I mean. We st like we st like there's so much to to say, but one like I told Roman like you know I I've told everyone too I record record like right now eighty to ninety percent of my foods, fruits and vegetables I don't record I, I you know as much as people you know if you I mean if you're doing a bodybuilding show go ahead and record everything, but like in my opinion I think the benefits and even the carbohydrates and the sugars like Roman was saying, are, are never gonna do me wrong. In my opinion, I, I, I've never seen a body change. I've never seen myself gain like five pounds because I ate, a, like sometimes I've, eat, I've eaten a box of strawberries in a day and I have not seen any weight difference. Um, that's part of the number two thing is, remember when he s said sugars, there's obviously two different types of sugars, the ones that are found in fruits and the ones that are like refined, that are in like pastries and stuff. Obviously your body's gonna digest them both differently, but in moderation, you shouldn't have to worry about that unless you're downing like two, three pastries compared to like like a handful of strawberries or blueberries or whatnot. Um, and the third thing is what he was talking about, what Roman was talking about, like um, the carnivore slash carbs are bad. Um, Lane Norton uh, posted, a, I think it was him, posted a, like a picture of like a timeline yeah. where it's like 80 1980s carbs are bad 1990 or 1990s carbs are bad 2000s fats are bad um and then 2010s i forgot what else um vegetables are bad 2000 and then and then i think in 2020s i said he's he, he was saying like everything's going to be bad for you eventually um 
And I think the fats, like with trans fats and all that good stuff, that was part of the era and whatnot. But um, just to piggyback on that, um, but do you want to go ahead and do another myth? Um, yeah. Since I, I the, part of my myth was like the sugar aspect, like what's the difference in what you kind of look at with fruits compared to like pastry sugars and whatnot? Yeah. So like along that those same lines, um, and as uh, Antoine had alluded to, uh, Lane Norton definitely a, a really reputable source out there. He's at BioLane, BioLane on YouTube, uh, Instagram. Um, he puts out a lot of great information. He, I would say that he's a pretty strong character in his personality, um, but if you can look past that, he puts out really great information. He has a PhD in um, I think like nutritional sciences and like yeah. sports physiology, something along those lines. Um, I might. I might be totally like, I know he has a PhD. Yeah, uh, he's a yeah, smart dude. Yeah. Um, the next myth that I wanted to like bust is fats are bad for you or, or fats make you fat. And I think that this is something like from a linguistic standpoint, it makes sense. Like you hear like, oh, fats are bad for you. Fats make you fat. It's like, yeah, that's like a tautology. Like, <laughs> no, duh. Um, that's just pure not nonsense. Um, so once again, uh, we have to look this within the frame of the individual's entire diet. So if they're eating within a caloric, um, let's say, uh, a, caloric a caloric restricted diet, meaning that they're intentionally eating to um, lose weight, maybe they're dieting for a show, dieting for um, like the summer, like uh, your wedding, whatever it might be. If you're consuming uh, a relative amount of fats in your diet, let's say like 25% of your diet are going to be fat-containing uh, foods, then, um, or like 25% of your diet is composed of fat, and you're eating within a caloric uh, deficit, then you're still going to be losing weight. Just because you're eating fat doesn't make, doesn't make you, or doesn't create a, a situation where you're in a hypercaloric diet or where you're going to be gaining weight. It's not, you're not doomed to gain weight eating fat. What what a potentially slippery soap with fats are is they are more they're more calorically dense, um, than and and they're it's it's harder to track in my opinion. That's the one. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're that's good. the one macronutrient that I've had troubles with, even with competing. Fats are literally it's it's like they're almost see through sometimes, and they will slip in anywhere they can. Yeah. And I'm I'm not even joking. That's like uh, I wish I was, but like fats is like one thing. In my opinion, recording's the hardest thing because I feel like I can get it like 70%, 75% of the time. But like carbohydrates is easy, protein's easy, but fat, it will go ahead as you're yeah. saying, like they're just. Yeah, they definitely can be because, like, so one way that's that. What made you, that's what made me think about it because when you said calorie dense, yeah. they're just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like if you have anything that was sauteed in oil, for example, you need to count that. Like, and that, it, could, that could be five grams. Yeah. Maybe 20 grams in, in sautéed vegetables. A, a tablespoon of olive oil, I think it's 210 grams, uh, 210 calories. Yeah. So for fat, that's, um, what is that? How many grams? That's 10 by by 9. That's 20. It's 23. It's 23 grams of fat right there. Um, that's not to say, like, stay away from olive oil. Olive oil has some, some great fats in there that are part of a healthy diet. Yeah. If, if consumed within the constraints of what the, the individual is looking at, like it's like we've been referring to, like we have to look at the calories in, calories out model. If the individual is looking to, to lose weight and, you know, they have, let's say, like they consume um, 100 grams of fat a day, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. as long as that fits within their, their, um, their model of, um, you know, healthy eating, um, then, then they won't, they won't gain, gain weight. Um, just the one thing to keep in mind is that for some people, um, they do report, they self-report uh, feeling more like satiated or more full when they eat fats. Other people, um, it's kind of like a slippery slope. So you need to determine what foods um, agree with you best. Um, so it might be like something that like, you know, you enjoy eating or like doesn't upset your tummy or something along those lines. And then, you know, work those into your diet. So this is something that... I love how you said tell me. Tell me, yeah. <laughs> for, um, I, for, sorry, <laughs> everything was so serious and so scientific. And right when he said tell me, it threw me off. So if that <laughs> threw you off too, hey, might as well. No one, no one wants to have tummy sticks after they eat fats is what I'm trying to say. Tummy um, sticks? <laughs> yeah, tummy sticks. Um, fat in and of itself is not going to um, make you fat. That's a myth. Um, so if you hear that... Um, you know, you can say, like, oh, go check out the Gains podcast. 
um, they, they talk about why that, that is a myth. Yeah, and, and the other, I mean, the other thing is what, besides the, th like, something to add to Roman's uh, myth is what we mentioned in, like, the basic macronutrient uh, episode where we were just explaining, like, basics, like, what Roman, like, you know, you know, stomped his foot on and was just really serious about was how fat's, like, a really strong macronutrient when it comes to, like, hormones and your basic genetics and whatnot, because if you're not eating that stuff then, I mean, you could stay away from all you want, but it's a powerful, it's a powerful macronutrient. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say that's, that's like one of the, for me, that's, you know, because we, we consume so much media on the day-to-day the -day basis, and some of it is like potentially somewhat informative, and some of it is just downright wrong. Um, I'm not like, I'm not unlike other people where I have some of these like ideas creep in my head like, oh, you shouldn't eat fried food because that's going to make you fat. Within, within a certain context or a certain diet, like in moderation, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I think one of the most compelling arguments for why you should consume a, like a solid amount of fat, like a decent amount of your diet, some, some organizations will recommend like 30 to 50% of your diet in fats. Um, I'm not like a big keto guy, so I stay away from like that 90% range. I think that's too high. Yeah. But like 30% of your diet in healthy fats um, helps with um, healthy like hormonal um, function. Um, certain fats are the backbone of hormones, so they ensure that like you feel like alive and refreshed when you wake up as opposed to feeling lethargic. You want to like get after the day. You have yeah. that like go get it mentality. Or you're like, you have sex drive, like you want to be active physically or maybe sexually active with your hey partner. Now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that, that is like one of like the strong benefits that, that healthy fats can provide to, to a, um, an individual yeah. w within um, the constraints of a, of a healthy diet. Yeah, and then uh, it's, it's a really great conversation. Um, the, the last piece before we sign off is... What I had written down, one of the a good ones, com combining with like every other one we were talking about today, how the the myth is all calories are equal. Um, speaking of trends and like media and whatnot, um, what we've been told and what a lot of people, especially people who, like you know, as much as like we make this podcast for people who lift, we make the podcast for people who want to just lift to be healthy. Like, we don't, we don't really care if you're just as serious as us. We don't care if you record, like, your, your workouts and whatnot. Um, the whole thing is to promote healthy living and stuff, and uh, not stuff and, and all that. And, um, but we want to make sure, like, when, it's, when all calories are equal, a lot of, you know, your famous people, a lot of Instagram models and whatnot will, will always say, like, hey, here's a pizza compared to, you know, like, sweet potatoes, broccoli, and chicken – like, it's the same calorie count, same fat, same protein. Well, no, not really. Um, I think that's a, a biggest thing, too, is a lot of people will just say, like, hey, just because uh, we'll do the most common one, just because I could fit a Pop-Tart in my, my pre-workout meal, that, well, that's going to be the same as me eating, like, a bowl of oats or a bowl of rice with, like, chicken and stuff. And I'm like, oh, not really. You could get it, like I said, like what Roman said, like, obviously moderation is good, but... In my opinion, um, like after my show when I did like my recovery diet, um, I I did Lane Norton's. Uh, well, I don't even know if it's part of his anymore. I think he might have sold it off, but I used Avatar Nutrition, which is pretty much a system um, made up with like his mindset when it comes to like macronutrients, like and all this stuff. And it was like a recording system of food logins, and you know what they suggest and what I still suggest to everyone too is. Use that 80-20 rule when it comes to, like, um, actual micronutrient-dense foods compared to not micronutrient-dense foods, yeah. meaning, like, that Pop-Tart's not going to give you the same health benefits as you would with, like, a bowl of oats, you know, a thing of sweet potatoes with chicken and all that good stuff. It might give you those calories, um, but in reality, you kind of want to just balance those out, especially during a training session. You want to have the best foods when it comes to like that energy storage and all that. Yeah, and I, I would say that's just for key, that's the key takeaway from that as well. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong if, if you really enjoy pop tarts and you want to throw them in your diet or once in a while. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But you also need to understand that, okay, let's say like two Pop Tarts. If it I'm came down to there, it, yeah. It's 250 yeah. calories. Those aren't the same 250 calories as you could get from broccoli, yeah, two, sweet no, potatoes. Two, two Pop Tarts are 400 and something calories. So, so, so one pastry is yeah. 200 and something. And I know both of them add up to just under 500 yeah. or close to 500 yeah, so calories. Yeah, so there's like a popular... <laughs> just, ima- just imagine how much... Like Roman just ate a meal before this. And if I had to eyeball it, I didn't even... I don't, I don't even know what half of it was. But his was probably like 500 calories. Six, maybe six to 700. And imagine like... And he ate like two Tupperwares full of food, right? It was like yeah. two... Like, but compared to like two pastries of a Pop-Tart. Like, yeah. especially the mindset Sturkey, of diet. Yeah. carrots and turnips, and it was a pear. Yeah, I mean, and then imagine someone dieting compared to someone in a surplus. Which food choice would you rather have? Like, would you rather eat more or just because you think a pop starts tasty? Yeah. Like, wh- wh- which one's going to make you more successful? I mean, I'm going to go with the two things at Tupperware. Yeah. Like, I, I, in my opinion, if I was dieting, I want to eat the most food as possible. Yeah. So that, that's my kind of, like, take on that myth. Not only wanna... that, but like you said, you want to make sure that you're minimizing potential micronutrient deficiencies. Yeah, and you, so, and, yeah, you want to get as much micros as you can. Yep. Yeah. Getting various vitamins in there, you're ensuring that you're, like... Your, your macro content is, um, is on point, like making sure fiber, fiber is a huge one. Yeah. Um, you know, eating like a whole pizza, like we're pretty deficient in fiber. So that, that's a big one. Um, it, that, I'd say that comment means well, but it has to be taken into context again. Yeah, um, it's very poorly context. Yeah. Let's just say that. But it, one last thing, if I had to sum this up, it's all about the micros and macros, baby. For them gains. <laughs> them gains. Let's get after it. Thank you guys for watching for another one. You know what to do. We'll see you next time.